JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 25th until January the 29th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following the ACB, the Bank of Japan and the Bank of Canada decisions last week, this week the central bank torch will be passed to the FOMC, which decides on monetary policy on, uh, on Wednesday. We also get several data releases, including the Australian CPIs, the UK employment report, uh, as well as the preliminary GDP prints from the US and Germany. But let's take things from the beginning. Uh, Monday appears to be a very light day in terms of economic data, with the only release worth mentioning being the German IFO survey for January. The current assessment index is forecast to have declined to 90.6 from 91.3, while the expectations one is anticipated to have risen to 93.2 from 92.8. This is likely to drive the business climate index, the business climate index uh, fractional, fractionally lower to 91.8 from 92.1. That said, uh, bearing in mind that, uh, that the ZW current conditions index for the month stayed nearly unchanged and that the economic sentiment one uh, rose by more than expected, we would consider the risks surrounding the IFO indices as tilted to the upside. Despite the lockdown measures around the Eurozone, on Thursday, ECB President Lagarde said that the downside risks to the economic outlook have, are now less pronounced making investors skeptical over further easing by the ECB, although the bank repeated once again that it stands ready to adjust all of its instruments as appropriate. Thus, an improving eye for survey may reduce even further speculation over more easing by the ECB. Apart from the IFO survey, on Monday the World Economic Forum begins. This time the event will be held virtually instead of uh, gathering in the Swiss ski resort in the Swiss uh, ski resort of Davos, as it is usually the case. With uh, the global economic uh, with the global economy being hit severely in 2020 by the fast spreading of the coronavirus, it would be interesting to hear discussions on that front. Now on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday is a light day as well, with the only important data set being the UK employment report for November. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 5.1 from 4.9%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has lost 100,000 jobs in the three months to November, compared to a 144,000 loss in the three months to October. Average uh, weekly earnings, um, both including and excluding bonuses, are expected to have accelerated to 2.9% year-over-year and 3.1% year-over-year from 27 and 2.8% respectively. Last week, both the headline and the court's uh, UK CPIs rose by more than expected, but still remained below the Bank of England's uh, target of 2%. Thus, combined with uh, this, a rising unemployment rate is uh, likely to keep the prospect of the Bank of England increasing the pace of its QE purchases on the table. However, as we noted last week, this is something the Bank already noted that it stands ready to do. Thus, it will not come as a major, as a major surprise if it happens. Overall, with the Brexit saga now taking the back seat and the Bank of England governor playing down the prospect of negative interest rates, the pound has the potential to perform relatively well, at least against the safe havens like the dollar and the yen, which we expect to stay under selling interest due to a supported overall market sentiment. 
We understand that talks uh, between the EU and the UK are far from over, as there is still the issue of the UK's access to the EU's uh, financial world. However, we will start worrying again as soon as headlines of the, on that front start entering the spotlight. On Wednesday, the main event uh, may be the FOMC monetary policy decision. According to the minutes uh, added, uh, of the latest meeting, some um, members noted that they could consider further adjustments to their QE purchases, such as increasing the pace of purchases or weighting them towards longer term maturities. Uh, while other members said that once progress towards their goals has been attained, a gradual tapering could begin. However, several officials, including Fed Chair Powell, pushed back the idea of tapering anytime soon. Although speculation on that front may have revived, may have been revived after US President Joe Biden revealed a 1.9 trillion US dollars spending package, with inflation staying below the Fed's objective of 2%, we believe that Jerome Powell will stick to his guns and downplay once again the idea of scaling back quantitative easing. And we see the case for the committee to keep the door open for further easing if deemed necessary. As for Wednesday's data, during the Asian morning, we have Australia's CPIs for the fourth quarter. Both the headline and trimmed mean year-over-year -year rates are expected to have held steady at 0.7% and 1.2% respectively. Although both uh, rates are well below the lower end of the RBA's uh, target range of 2 to 3%, unchanged deflation is unlikely to increase speculation for further easing by this uh, bank. After all, at its uh, latest meeting, it noted that the, Australian economy, uh, that the Australian economic recovery is underway and that the recent data have generally been better than expected. So, in order for officials to be tempted to add to their stimulative efforts, we believe that the disappointment in the CPIs may be needed. On Thursday, we get the German preliminary inflation data for January and the first estimate of the US GDP for the fourth quarter. Both German CPI and HICP rates are expected to have rebounded to 0.7% year over year and 0.5% year over year from minus 0.3 and minus 0.7% respectively. This could raise speculation that the Eurozone's headline inflation may also exit the negative territory. As for the US GDP, following the 31.4 tumble in, um, in, the, in the second quarter, it rebounded to 33.4 in the third quarter. Uh, in the third quarter, and now it is expected to normalize at around 4% in the last quarter of uh, 2020. The U.S. Uh, new home sales for December are also are also coming out, and the forecast points to an acceleration to one to one uh, to one point five percent month over month after. Uh, uh, after a 11% slide in, uh, in, uh, in November. Finally, on Friday, uh, during the Asian morning, we get the usual end-of-month data dump from uh, Japan. The unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked up to 3% from 2.9%, while the jobs-to-applications ratio is expected to have held steady at 1.06%. The Tokyo Core CPI is anticipated to have increased to minus 0.6% year over year from, uh, from minus 0.9%, uh, while no forecast is available for the headline print. Japan's preliminary industrial production for December is expected to have fallen 1.5% month, month over month after sliding 0.5% in November. The summary of opinions from last week's Bank of Japan monetary policy meeting is also coming out. Now, during the European morning, Germany's preliminary GDP for the fourth quarter is coming out, and although no forecast is available for the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate, the year-over-year year one is anticipated to have risen somewhat to minus 3.4% from minus 3.9%. Now, in any case, bearing in mind that we already have the ZDW survey for January out, as well as the preliminary PMIs for the month, we doubt that the GDP data for the last three months of 2020 will prove a major market mover. Given that investors have already an idea of how the German economy has entered the new year, they may treat the GDP data as outdated and perhaps pay more attention to the IFO survey, which is coming out on Monday and we already described.
Now later in the day, we get uh, Canada's uh, monthly GDP for November. While well, from the US, we have the personal income, personal spending, the core PC index, which is uh, the Fed's favorite inflation metric, all for December. And also we get the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for January. The Canadian economy is expected to have grown 0.4% month over month, the same pace as in October, while in the US, the core PC index is forecast to have ticked down to 1.3% from 1.4%. This is in line with the view I already uh, mentioned that the inflation in the US is uh, below the 2% objective. Remember that the Fed wants inflation uh, to, uh, to, wants to allow inflation to overshoot 2% for a while so that uh, the CPI average is 2% over time. So this means that 1.3 is a very low inflation print. And that's why I expect uh, on Wednesday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell to downplay once again um, the case for uh, QE tapering and for the committee as a whole to keep the door open for further easing if the situation worsens. Now, personal income is anticipated to have rebounded 0.1% month over month from minus 1.1%, while personal spending is expected to have slid 0.4% month over month, the same pace as in November. As for the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index, it is expected to have held steady at 79.2. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week, um, uh, I hope you have a great week, excuse me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next Monday at uh, at 8 o'clock uh, GMT. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from uh, Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT just fair and direct.